West African College of Surgeons regulates surgical training in the region and they have the primary exam which is an exam you take like an entrance exam into surgical training in any of the member countries and this includes uh, general surgery uh, both as a parent uh, specialty from which uh, you go on to train in say neurosurgery urology pediatric surgery and what have you or even general surgery itself as a consultant it also includes some um, faculties like o and g radiology so it's a broad um, college but the entrance exam into the surgery faculty is what this video is about and it basically tests your basic sciences it does not test your knowledge of surgery per se if anything comes out in surgery it will be something you can easily maneuver so you really do not have to go reading um, surgery textbooks or revising surgery general surgery to be able to pass this exam what you need a detailed knowledge of is your basic sciences and that's your anatomy physiology and pathology you need a comprehensive um, understanding of anatomy and that includes gross anatomy your embryology and histology physiology the same thing you have to understand it thoroughly but for pathology oh uh, well basically they test surgical pathology but anything in general pathology can be tested uh, rarely will you see any question from systemic pathology even systemic uh, surgical pathology so the main focus for pathology should be the first 10 chapters of Robbins. I think that's the easier way people remember it. It's um, 4 hours, 30 minutes a long um, exam. And uh, that's, that's divided into three sessions. You have 100 questions from each uh, subject for 90 minutes. That leaves you with just about 0 0.9 seconds per question. So you really have to be on your toe. And the exam is computer-based test, okay, not a pen and paper. It is conducted in nine regions, in nine centers across the region. And that includes uh, Abuja, Ibadan, and Enugu in Nigeria. You have Accra, Kumasi in Ghana. You have Banjul in um, Gambia. And you have um, Dhaka in Senegal. Freetown in Syria alone and Monrovia in Liberia. Uh, what makes you eligible for this exam? Uh, first, of course, you need your primary medical qualification. Uh, that's your degree certificate. And then you need to have completed a recognized internship. Okay, uh, some countries will have that as one year, some as two years, but you need to have completed the internship and that will lead you to the third qualification, which is full registration with the medical licensing body, usually the medical and dental council in your country. How do you prepare for this exam? Uh, the first thing you need to think about is how much time you need. And that will vary depending on the job you're doing. Or if you're out of job for any reason, the amount of time you have, how stressful is the job? Personally, I feel anywhere between three to six months is enough. Three months for someone who is free or has a flexible job and six months if you're really busy. But another thing to put into consideration is how much base knowledge you have of this subject. Uh, how much of anatomy especially do you know? Because that will influence both the time you devote to studying and the, the style of studying, the materials you begin to consume. For example, talking about the resources, if you do not have a strong base, you cannot escape reading textbooks. You may want to try your questions and many other things, but your foundation will be shaky. And if the exam goes out of expectation, out of the normal, you will be thrown off balance. You need to understand the concept. So the very first thing is, know the time you have available and also know your knowledge base what are you building on so for textbooks there are a lot of options you have some people prefer the last anatomy and some people prefer Gray's anatomy i am a fan of the harold ellis clinically oriented anatomy 
and there are many options out there but you have to pick one and stick to it and study it well and for physiology of course there's guiding and so many other textbooks so but again although i will advise studying a textbook at least one textbook for anatomy uh, depending on your knowledge base i may not advise you going to study a textbook afresh for physiology and pathology but if you must you pick the one you like some people go for usml materials okay kaplan to revise the physiology then your uh, your pathology your best bet if you must read a book is to read the first 10 chapters of robbins and Kotra. but there's still a more say, pathology which is a pretty good textbook also and then i put question banks here because I believe that for many postgraduate exams and this uh, West African College of Surgeons primary is not an exception. Pattern recognition is very important. There is no standard question bank out there for West African College of Surgeons primary. But there are textbooks which are question books that I believe are very helpful in passing this exam in recognizing pattern and in revising the subjects and topics you may not have to go reading again and that includes there's guiding review it just has questions across all the topics with explanation and answers something worth going through and there is also cultural review the robinson cultural textbook and grace anatomy has a review too even um there's this textbook anatomy question for uh, the mrcs it's also a pretty good textbook and that leads me to recall why are these question banks or review books very critical because the recall questions you might see you realize if you do these review books that some of them are just about the same okay you may not see answers to recall questions people might volunteer what they remember they don't know the answer some people will guess the answer but you stumble on these recall questions in this review materials and you have both the answer and proper explanation than guessing answers in a group chat so recalls are important i believe but they are of no use if you don't know the answer and you cannot research the answer some of the questions you go online you go to your textbooks you are still not able to tell what is the answer because whoever said the question had an idiosyncrasy to it so it's important you look through these review books they will give you a general overview and they will give you answers to many of the recall questions on the exam day what should you be doing of course uh, it goes without saying that you should rest very much before the exam my recommendation is 24 hours before the exam you should actually read nothing but if you must read read just very little enough to keep you afloat but not so much to stress you so you can be doing something to keep you in the spirit of the exam but not really so intense reading that you start delving into things you don't know and then start scattering your composure eat something four hours 30 minutes that's not what you're going to spend in the venue there will be breaks in between the three subjects and that means you're going to spend a lot of time eat something don't underestimate what it takes to stay focused for four hours 30 minutes and be relaxed in the exam yes the, the time is short 0.9 seconds but one good thing about it is you don't have long stem rarely will you see a long stem question so there is a thing of if you know the answer you know it if you don't know it you don't maybe you have to think that will take your time so be relaxed so you can get the questions you know and so you might be able to give a healthy guess to the ones you don't know and that leads me to telling you to answer all questions guess what you don't know don't leave any stone unturned whether there's negative marking or not we don't know that's the thing with most african exams we actually don't have that transparency of knowing how it is um, uh, scored or whatever but then you give it your best shot you've not been told there's negative marking so it's safe to assume that there is none answer every single question and mind the time there's a timer on the screen and it counts downward which is i think is an advantage and it's something worth commending the college for because 
you will know how many minutes is left for you as you're progressing. Uh, 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 there is there are some techniques you can use to be sure that you meet up with time. I'll probably share that in a subsequent video, but be mindful of time and take note of the different um, features available on the software. For example, there is a calculator. If you have to calculate something, you do not have to, okay, start thinking, how do I do it in my head? You don't have a pen and a biro. There's a calculator on the screen. You may not know that until you come out. So look at the screen, use all the features to help you pass the exam. And if you put all this together, um, chances are that you are going to come out quite very well. Good luck to you.